In this video, we will explore the intricate anatomy of the oculomotor nerve. We will start with a comprehensive introduction, setting the stage for our detailed exploration of the oculomotor nerve. Following this, we'll delve into a thorough description of its origin in the midbrain, tracing its complex course and examining its vital relationships with surrounding cerebral and vascular structures. We'll then meticulously outline its terminal branches, highlighting their specific roles in ocular movement and function. Subsequently, our discussion will extend to the oculomotor nerve's connections with other nerves. Before concluding, we will comprehensively review the diverse functions of the oculomotor nerve. The third cranial nerve, also known as the oculomotor nerve, plays a crucial role in eye movements and pupil response. It has both motor and autonomic functions, making it essential for controlling several key aspects of ocular functioning. Motor functions of the oculomotor nerve include the innervation of the majority of the extraocular muscles. These muscles are responsible for most eye movements, such as upward, downward, and medial gaze. Specifically, it innervates the superior, inferior, and medial rectus muscles, as well as the inferior oblique muscle. In addition to these muscles, the oculomotor nerve also supplies the levator palpebri superioris muscle. This muscle is crucial for eyelid elevation, enabling us to open our eyes. The autonomic functions of the oculomotor nerve are equally vital. It innervates the ciliary muscle, which plays a key role in controlling the shape of the lens for focusing on objects at different distances. It also innervates the sphincter pupillae muscle, which constricts the pupil in response to light, pupillary light reflex, or during near-vision tasks. Impairments of the oculomotor nerve can lead to various clinical manifestations, each with a distinct semiological profile. Common symptoms include diplopia due to uncoordinated eye movements, ptosis, and abnormalities in pupil size and reaction, such as a dilated pupil that does not constrict in response to light. These symptoms can arise from various causes, including trauma, vascular diseases, infections, or tumors compressing the nerve. The oculomotor nerve emerges bilaterally from a specific region in the brainstem known as the posterior perforated substance, which is situated at the base of the brainstem and serves as the origination site for the oculomotor nerve. This area is nestled between the superior cerebellar artery and the posterior cerebral artery, two vital blood vessels supplying the brain. The positioning of the oculomotor nerve in relation to these arteries is of particular clinical importance. As the oculomotor nerve exits the brainstem, it takes a specific path, it moves inferiorly relative to the posterior cerebral artery and superiorly to the superior cerebellar artery. The proximity of the oculomotor nerve to these arteries implies potential vulnerability, any vascular abnormalities, such as aneurysms or arteriovenous malformations in these arteries, can adversely affect the nerve's function. The oculomotor nerve's complexity is further elucidated by its origin from two distinct nuclei located in the posteromedial aspect of the midbrain also known as the mesencephalon. These nuclei are the oculomotor nucleus and the accessory parasympathetic nucleus, each contributing different types of fibers essential for the nerve's multifaceted functions. The oculomotor nucleus, responsible for somatic efferent fibers, is strategically situated in the midbrain at the level of the superior colliculus. This positioning is specifically anterior to the cerebral aqueduct. The fibers originating from this nucleus are primarily involved in motor functions. They innervate most of the extraocular muscles, which are crucial for the execution of coordinated eye movements. Additionally, these fibers also supply the levator palpebri superioris muscle, essential for eyelid elevation. Adjacent to the oculomotor nucleus lies the accessory parasympathetic nucleus, contributing parasympathetic fibers and positioned immediately posterior to the oculomotor nucleus. The fibers from this nucleus play a pivotal role in the autonomic control of the eye. Medial fibers from this nucleus are directed towards the ciliary muscle. These fibers are integral for the process of accommodation, allowing the eye to adjust its focus on near or far objects. On the other hand, the lateral fibers are targeted towards the pupillary sphincter muscle. These fibers induce meiosis, which is the constriction of the pupil, an essential response for regulating the amount of light entering the eye and aiding in near-vision tasks. Within the posterior cranial fossa, the journey of the oculomotor nerve showcases its intricate relationship with various significant neuroanatomical structures. After emerging from the medial aspect of the cerebral peduncle, a key feature in the midbrain, the nerve enters the interpeduncular system, 
a fluid-filled space that is part of the subarachnoid space surrounding the brain. As the oculomotor nerve traverses the interpeduncular cistern, it is positioned in close proximity to several critical structures above the nerve, the uncus of the temporal lobe. This positioning is significant as the uncus, being part of the temporal lobe, is in the immediate vicinity of the nerve. The proximity to the uncus is clinically relevant because herniation of the uncus, as seen in cases of increased intracranial pressure, can directly compress the oculomotor nerve, leading to characteristic clinical symptoms such as an enlarged, unresponsive pupil. Medially, the oculomotor nerve is related to the base of the cerebral peduncle, a structure containing descending motor pathways. Additionally, it lies near the clivus, a bony part of the skull base. The nerve's proximity to these structures is crucial for surgical approaches in this region, as any manipulation here could potentially affect the nerve. Laterally, the nerve is in close association with the trochlear nerve, CN4, another cranial nerve involved in eye movement. This relationship is essential for coordinated eye movements. Also, the cerebellar tentorium, dural fold, is near the nerve laterally. The positioning relative to the tentorium is important in the context of tentorial herniation and its potential impact on the nerve. Below the oculomotor nerve, there are two other crucial cranial nerves, the trigeminal nerve, which is the main sensory nerve of the face, and the abducens nerve, responsible for lateral eye movement. The anatomical proximity of these nerves underlines the complexity and compactness of the cranial nerve pathways within the posterior cranial fossa. The path of the oculomotor nerve within the cavernous sinus exemplifies the intricate anatomical relationships that are critical for its function and clinical significance. After emerging from the interpeduncular fossa, the oculomotor nerve enters the cavernous sinus, complex venous structure located on either side of the cella turcica at the base of the skull. As it traverses through the cavernous sinus, the oculomotor nerve assumes a specific path along the supralateral aspect of the sinus wall. This positioning is of particular importance due to the proximity of the nerve to other crucial structures within the sinus. One of the key relationships here is with the internal carotid artery. The oculomotor nerve is positioned laterally to the internal carotid artery as it enters the cranial cavity. This spatial relationship is crucial as any pathology involving the carotid artery, such as an aneurysm or dissection, can have direct implications on the function of the oculomotor nerve potentially leading to clinical symptoms like eye movement disorders or ptosis. Within the cavernous sinus, the oculomotor nerve is situated superiorly to both the trochlear nerve and the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve. The trochlear nerve is closely aligned with the oculomotor nerve. Their proximity within the confined space of the cavernous sinus makes them susceptible to concurrent involvement in pathological conditions affecting the sinus. In the anterior part of the cavernous sinus, the oculomotor nerve undergoes an important division into superior and inferior branches. This division is essential for its functional anatomy as each branch innervates different extraocular muscles. The superior division primarily innervates the superior rectus and levator palpebri superioris muscles, while the inferior division innervates the medial rectus, inferior rectus, and inferior oblique muscles. This division also includes parasympathetic fibers that control pupil constriction and lens accommodation. Lastly, within the orbit, the journey of the oculomotor nerve demonstrates its intricate relationship with various other cranial nerves and structures. Upon reaching the orbit, the nerve enters through the superior orbital fissure, a key gateway that allows passage of structures from the cranial cavity to the orbit. Within this fissure, the oculomotor nerve passes through the common tendinous ring, also known as the annulus of sin, which serves as a point of origin for the extraocular muscles. At this juncture, the oculomotor nerve divides into two branches, the superior division and the inferior division. This division is critical for its functional distribution. Positioned between these divisions of the oculomotor nerve is the nasociliary nerve, a branch of the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. The nasociliary nerve is primarily responsible for sensory innovation in the orbital region. Its close proximity to the divisions of the oculomotor nerve is clinically significant, as any pathological process in this area may affect both motor and sensory functions of the eye. Below all three nerves, the abducens nerve is located. The abducens nerve has a critical role in eye movement, innervating the lateral rectus muscle, which abducts the eyeball. The arrangement of these nerves within the confined space of the orbit is not only an anatomical marvel but also a potential site for various pathological conditions. 
For instance, an orbital fracture or a lesion in the superior orbital fissure can lead to a complex presentation affecting multiple aspects of eye function due to the involvement of these nerves. The terminal branches of the oculomotor nerve, comprising the superior and inferior divisions, play a pivotal role in ocular function through their distinct and extensive innervation patterns. The superior division of the oculomotor nerve has a focused but critical role. It primarily innervates two muscles, the superior rectus and the levator palpebri superioris. The superior rectus muscle is essential for elevating the eyeball, allowing upward gaze. The levator palpebri superioris, on the other hand, is responsible for lifting the upper eyelid. Dysfunction of this division can lead to ptosis, drooping of the eyelid, and limitations in upward eye movement, significantly impacting visual function and facial aesthetics. In contrast, the inferior division of the oculomotor nerve has a more extensive distribution, reflecting its broader functional responsibilities. It innervates three key extraocular muscles, the medial rectus, which moves the eye medially, towards the nose, the inferior rectus, responsible for depressing the eyeball, downward gaze, and the inferior oblique, which helps in elevating and extorting, outward rotation, of the eye. Moreover, the inferior division also has an essential autonomic component. It gives off the parasympathetic route to the ciliary ganglion, a small parasympathetic ganglion located in the orbit. The fibers from this route innervate the sphincter pupillae muscle, inducing pupillary constriction, and the ciliary muscle, responsible for controlling the shape of the lens for near vision. This parasympathetic innervation is vital for adapting visual focus to different light conditions and distances, an essential aspect of visual acuity. The connections of the oculomotor nerve with other nerves and structures are essential for its comprehensive function, integrating multiple aspects of ocular control. These connections facilitate a range of sensory, motor, and autonomic responses vital for normal eye function. The trunk of the oculomotor nerve establishes important connections with the ophthalmic nerve, which is a branch of the trigeminal nerve. The ophthalmic nerve primarily carries sensory information from the structures in and around the eye, including the cornea, ciliary body, and part of the nasal cavity. The interaction between the oculomotor nerve and the ophthalmic nerve allows for a coordinated sensorimotor response. This connection ensures that movements of the eyeball are aligned with the sensory input from the eye, enabling precise visual tracking and reflex responses to stimuli. Additionally, the oculomotor nerve trunk receives sympathetic fibers from the carotid plexus. These sympathetic fibers are crucial for maintaining the tone of certain eye muscles and contribute to the regulation of pupil size. The integration of sympathetic innervation helps modulate ocular responses under different light conditions and during emotional or physiological stress, ensuring appropriate pupillary dilation and aiding in the fight-or-flight response. The inferior branch of the oculomotor nerve has a vital connection with the ciliary ganglion, a small parasympathetic ganglion located in the orbit. Through this connection, it distributes parasympathetic fibers to the eye. These fibers play a significant role in controlling the ciliary muscle and the sphincter pupillae muscle. The ciliary ganglion acts as a relay station for these parasympathetic fibers, ensuring that the eye can quickly adjust to different visual demands, such as changes in light intensity and shifting focus between distant and near objects. The functional roles of the oculomotor nerve are multifaceted, encompassing ocular motor function, palpebral motor function, and pupillary reflexes. Each of these functions is critical for normal vision and eye movement. First, the ocular motor function, the ocular motor nerve innervates several extraocular muscles, each with specific roles in eye movement, the medial rectus muscle, innervated by the inferior division of the ocular motor nerve, this muscle is responsible for adduction of the eye, moving the eye towards the nose. The inferior rectus muscle, also innervated by the inferior division, it contributes to the depression, downward movement and adduction of the eye. The superior rectus muscle, innervated by the superior division of the oculomotor nerve, this muscle elevates the eye, upward movement and also contributes to adduction. The inferior oblique muscle, this muscle, innervated by the inferior division, allows for elevation, abduction, movement away from the nose, and medial rotation, inward turn, of the eye. Together, these muscles allow for coordinated movements of the eyes, essential for tracking, focusing, and binocular vision. The palpebral motor function, the superior division of the oculomotor nerve innervates the levator palpebri superioris muscle, responsible for elevating the upper eyelid. This function is vital for opening the eye, 
allowing vision and protecting the eye from external irritants. Lastly, the pupillary reflexes, the oculomotor nerve also plays a crucial role in pupillary reflexes, which are the photomotor reflex, when light is shone into the eye, the parasympathetic fibers of the oculomotor nerve induce contraction of the pupillary sphincter muscle, resulting in meiosis, pupil constriction. This reflex helps regulate the amount of light entering the eye, protecting the retina and aiding in visual acuity. The consensual reflex, this reflex involves both eyes, when light is shone into one eye, the pupil of the other eye also constricts. This bilateral response is a critical protective and adaptive mechanism for visual function. The oculomotor nerve's comprehensive function in controlling eye movements, eyelid elevation, and pupil response is fundamental to many aspects of visual processing and eye protection. Its role is evident in everyday activities like reading, where coordinated eye movements and focus adjustments are essential, and in protective reflexes like blinking and pupil constriction in bright light. Disorders affecting the oculomotor nerve can lead to symptoms such as double vision, drooping eyelids, and abnormal pupil size or reactions, significantly impacting a person's quality of life. The oculomotor nerve serves as the primary motor nerve for the majority of the muscles controlling eye movement and other essential ocular functions. Its role, however, extends beyond mere motor control, encompassing vital autonomic functions as well. As the main motor nerve for the orbit, the oculomotor nerve innervates all extraocular muscles except for the lateral rectus and superior oblique muscles. The lateral rectus muscle, responsible for moving the eye laterally, is controlled by the abducens nerve, while the superior oblique muscle, which helps in downward and lateral eye movement, is innervated by the trochlear nerve. This division of labor among the cranial nerves ensures precise and coordinated control of eye movements in all directions, a crucial aspect of visual tracking and focus. In addition to its motor capabilities, the oculomotor nerve also carries important parasympathetic fibers. These fibers innervate the pupillary sphincter muscle, allowing for the constriction of the pupil in response to light, photomotor reflex, and the ciliary muscle, crucial for adjusting the lens of the eye for near vision, accommodation. This autonomic function is essential for adapting vision to varying light conditions and distances, maintaining optimal visual acuity and comfort. However, impairment of the oculomotor nerve, known as oculomotor nerve palsy, can lead to several significant symptoms. These include immobility of the eye due to paralysis of the muscles it innervates, ptosis, drooping of the upper eyelid, from the paralysis of the levator palpebri superioris muscle, and midriasis, dilated pupil, coupled with impaired accommodation for distance due to disrupted parasympathetic control. These symptoms can significantly affect visual function and quality of life. Furthermore, a unilateral lesion of the oculomotor nerve often results in diplopia or double vision. This occurs because the affected eye cannot move in coordination with the healthy eye, leading to misalignment and perception of two images. The occurrence of diplopia can be a significant impediment to daily activities, affecting tasks that require precise visual focus like reading or driving. In summary, the oculomotor nerve's role in ocular and visual function is multifaceted and vital. Its motor and parasympathetic functions are integral to normal eye movement, eyelid elevation, pupillary response, and lens accommodation. Understanding the complexities and potential pathologies of the oculomotor nerve is essential in clinical settings for diagnosing and managing various ocular and neurological disorders.